playing online and on smart devices. Now on London Scotty Radio, it's podcast time. I'm George Matlock. Welcome to London Scotty Radio, a podcast service of the London Scotty Club. I'm George Matlock, your host for today's programme. Delighted to tell you that we have on the line, all the way from the dizzy tops of the Lake District, uh, Stuart Medland, an artist of uh, nature, uh, a wildlife painter. Welcome. Hello, George. Hi. It's lovely to have you on the show. Stuart, we've got a very interesting story to to showcase today, quite literally, as we will be publishing a little photograph on the podcast to illustrate what we're talking about. You very recently painted uh, the two Scottish Terriers at my home, Picush and Pudding. First of all, have you fully recovered from that? (laughs) Yes, yes, it has been um, um, an uplifting experience from start to end, a very interesting experience and one which uh, which I have enjoyed greatly. Um, so so thank you for the opportunity, George. I've, I've got to know the, the Scottish pretty well through the painting, I think. Fantastic. And also um, you had the opportunity, of course, to meet the Scotties because we've been talking about this painting for quite a while. In fact, the best part of two years, I think, when we first initiated yes. the, uh, the, mm. the, the the dialogue about this. Um, perhaps I should just I, uh, quickly uh, explain to people that um, we, we met really um, almost by accident. I was on holiday in Norfolk back in 2014 and I came across uh, a place, a gallery that was um, showcasing some of your work. Birdscapes. Birdscapes is the name of the place, yeah, it's a, it's mm. a, a bird mm. life um, um, art gallery. And um, uh, I, 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 my eyes immediately were drawn to this painting you have of oyster catchers, uh, which now is at uh, a lovely framed and on our wall at home. And I thought there's this particular way that you paint, which I thought was so well suited to painting Scottish Terriers as well. And that was this sort of angular style that you have and very strident, bold colours, which seems to really encapsulate the spirit and the personality of Scottish Terriers, as any owner will tell you. And that's really how it started. That was 2014. We, we've we stayed in touch because I tracked you down um, through, the, through the gallery and, as I knew your name. Mm-hmm. Um, and one thing led to another. And then in sort of 2018, you came to our home and um you met the dogs and i said i'd like you to paint them what was your reaction when i told you that (laughs) well first of all thank you um once again for inviting us down to see the oyster catchers which was um the main reason for the visit wasn't it uh, Mm -hmm. initially as far as we were concerned anyway and uh, and it was a thrill to see them framed um and and hanging as as I'd envisaged, oh. though, though the frame that you had chosen was um, was quite stunning, and uh, so it was lovely to see them show turn off to their best. So um, the rest of the afternoon, um, I was I was enjoying the the experience in general, and we were having a lovely time in the garden, weren't we? It was a beautiful afternoon, and and there were the Scotties, which you introduced us too and um my first thought was well this is yeah this is something very different but um but i i would be happy to do that very happy to try that um the the most important thing possibly for my own painting is to have an initial experience to to actually take off from and when it's when it's a wildlife subject as it usually is it it follows an encounter um something that has happened out in the wild which inspires me to work with the the patterns the shapes the colors usually um of of the birds the butterflies that i have been involved with and that afternoon with you and the scotties and 
and your your good wife Anchely was that kind of experience. It was a, a beautiful afternoon. There was a holly blue butterfly in the garden. Mm. There, there were the dogs. You were explaining um, about how they love the autumn time when um, your orchard trees are dropping their fruit, the conference pears, the, the James Grieve apples, the Victoria plums. And as we were talking, I began to see how we could tell a story through through the painting that that the the doggies themselves might well lend themselves um lovely that you believed in my in my style <laughs> um in in so far as as i might be able to do that um and i began to see that 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 could happen and almost immediately i think because we had your fig tree taking up a good part of the garden and there was the garden furniture there was the paving i know it's turned out a little bit differently but everything provided a backdrop and apart from being very pleased that you should even ask me i thought yes this this is something that i would enjoy doing and indeed that's that's how it turned out to be. We took lots of photographs of the dogs, didn't we, that afternoon? So I had something, I was armed with something. I was able to bring those home and almost immediately get those photographs up on the laptop, see what configuration of the two doggies might well work. So we had a peakish sideways on and, and pudding looking over him. So there, there was a profile and a full face immediately which which took my attention the the big challenge was um really whether i could achieve the, the character of pudding in particular through my own style of painting through the use of angular shapes and um that that was what gave me greatest pleasure i think when i thought I, I might have achieved that it was easier to to um achieve that with pikush because he was already um within the painting he was looking upwards um to the holly blue butterfly that was part of their story that day so um his kind of regal demeanor was already um being helped along the way there um, and, and yes, yes, as we began to put, or I began to put the drawing together, in order for you to see it, because we, mm -hmm. we visited, didn't we? we? We got together That's up right. here, halfway between the, the two lockdowns, and I was most pleased that, that you had seen um, the drawing out of the design, and, uh, and I had your go-ahead. That, that always gives an artist confidence, I think. <laughs> um, and, and I was able to plunge in. And then it was the colours, how, how you were going to react to the colours. And um, and you were very positive at every stage. Oh, well, great. Um, yeah, great. Yes. Now, that's a, a very good uh, summation of, of how the, the painting came to be, the genesis of it. Um, I mean, you came down, it was indeed a summer's day. I think it might, might have been July of 2018. And you were here for the farewell concert of Paul Simon in London. I it think. was. Yes, yeah. indeed, indeed. And uh, as you as you came for, for that and we, we had tea in the in the garden and so on. Um, and it was indeed the oyster catchers. I wanted to show you how we'd framed them. And, and I'm very pleased that, that it met with your approval. Um, we then got on to the next natural subject. It was how about painting something from scratch? Would you consider painting Scottish Terriers? And I, I, I think this is the first time you've painted dogs isn't it because i know you you paint butterflies and and also moths and uh, and and birds well it is uh, certainly that was the first um first time i have painted any domestic animal george it it, it has only been wildlife subjects up until this point although i have um done um one or two pastel pictures of of my daughter's horse and uh, so that that was a little bit of a a departure from what I usually do. But but yes, um, most of my work is inspired by the the patterns in the the flocks of birds, um, particularly wading birds, um, make together. Um, the 
the patterns that are there to um, to discover and to interpret. And that really gives me quite a lot of freedom because while the, the shapes and the colors of individual species identify them, when, when I'm trying to find a, a pattern or a pattern within a flock, a pattern of color, shape, um, such as the oyster catchers strikes me, then um, it's quite a thrill that I, I have um, almost license to interpret that how I will, because mm. it's nothing that's, that has possibly ever been pinned down in that way before. So, so that that's that's a joy. The um, so the Scotties, I had to be more particular. They're not a flock. It was just the two, and, and, and um, they're owned by a human being who will express his opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is, yeah, absolutely. And um, knowing how much um, pea cushion pudding mean to you and Anchovy, um, that that was a little pressure, but it was a positive thing. It uh, it uh, made me think hard about their character and how best to to present that, but. There was also the balance. I, I enjoyed the aspect of the balance in the painting, the balance of the, the two dogs, how they do make a unit. Um, I, I think the, the two of them painted the way they are. And then there were the other elements of the story to balance the, the, the dogs themselves um, in all the corners of the canvas, including including the, um, the pagoda, of course. Um, and that that was probably the most difficult thing, uh, right. difficult well, element to include, yeah. I, I guess. But I think we've managed that. I think so. And um, I guess in a way, uh, you, to, to make people understand why why I've gone for this kind of, I suppose you might call it modern art style, um, as opposed to, you know, why don't I come up with a lifelike painting of the dogs? Well, the simple mm. reason is, um, as owners who dote upon their dogs, you know, we've taken thousands upon thousands of photographs of them, obviously, as they've been growing up with us at, at home. We've had them since they were puppies. And so, um, you know, there are lots of artists and this is no disrespect to artists, but with today's technology, it is actually possible to recreate through painting uh, a, a very good reproduction of a genuine photograph mm. um, down to the very last whisker. And uh, as I say, this is not to belittle or, or to trivialize. If this is what people want, this is fine. But I, what I was looking for, and I guess it's something I've always uh, appreciated in art, is it's great to be able to interpret something. So it, you're not necessarily given everything in front of you, but you're sort of left to sort of interpret and 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 discover things and and therefore that is why for, from you know from my point of view the idea of doing this this style of painting um was perfect i wanted you to interpret the dogs as opposed to see the dogs and and, and i think that's the huge big big difference i might even mm -hmm. say that um if i was to sort of say where i sort of see you in the spectrum of art i would say that you know things like shards of glass kaleidoscopes um would be the sort of thing stained glass windows would be the sort of thing that I could see you really uh, producing to a very high standard, because I think that your style very much lends itself to that. Well, well that is interesting. There are um, one or two pieces that I have done fairly recently, which um, uh, do do remind me of stained glass window. And um, yes, I think I think there's there is a lot in what in what you say there. Um, and in, indeed, while I'm in the process of working on a piece, um, such, such things of, often occur to me, and I and I see um, perhaps a, a variation, and uh, and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, this 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 might work as a stained glass window. Maybe we will try that one day. Um, but I have so many things going on in my mind as I'm working that, um, that I, I guess I, tr I try to keep things um, <laughs> compartmentalized a little bit if I can as long as I can a bit, bit organized yes. yeah. so tell me I mean it's probably the last question I want to ask which I think everyone else wants to know is how long it took you to actually produce this painting I mean we, we started a sort of um, 
on and off uh, discussion about this, as I said, in the summer of 2018. It's just recently, at the start of 2021, being completed, and it's now in the process of being framed. Um, the you, you sent initial sketches, which um, in the end turned out to be pretty close to what we ended up with. So I'm pleased to say we didn't um, uh, we didn't need, feel the need to adjust hugely, and we we just added, if anything, to the storyline and where the fruit should be sitting and what kind of paving stones we had and, and so on mm. and so forth. So I think in a, in a way that it was, this was more finesse and, and just getting the effects, but the overall composition pretty much stayed true to the original sketches. So when, just remind us if you would, uh, when did those first sketches get drawn up? Well, well they were drawn that the, um, the initial sketches uh, were, the, were done just before uh, you came up to the Lake District in uh, when when was that? George? That would have Between... been um, August of 2020, when, yeah. when we were still allowed to travel. <laughs> yes, indeed. So so we worked from those sketches to create uh, a drawing on the canvas, which is what I brought to show you, wasn't mm -hmm. it? But that was basically uh, um, the two dogs themselves. The other elements of the story, we actually had a conversation uh, about, didn't we? Th throughout so at one point um there was quite a lot of coming back back and forth between the two of us as as to how the top right hand corner of the painting was going to be it could have gone in several ways couldn't it That's my original right. idea was that it would we we would have some of the brickwork from the house um to, to balance the, the the paving stones and um we we discussed that another um, idea was that we could possibly introduce one of the uh, plane trees from the park just down the road from you as as they had very distinctive leaves and and the the fig tree leaves were already providing a, a border weren't they your own fig tree um and but we decided in the end to go with the victoria plums didn't we because they they balanced the the conference pair and the the jane greaves James Grieve apples in the other parts of the painting, uh, uh, along with the ball. That's absolutely um, right. Stuart, um, it's been a delight to talk to you. And if any of our members would like to discuss with you possibility of commissioning you to paint something for them, um, and I know you're very reasonably priced as well, if I may say so. Um, an original, <laughs> you should have told me that earlier, George. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, <laughs> um, I, I just uh, put it to you. Would you like uh, to take on a more opportunities like this to paint th th this breed of dog? Well, I, I would be very privileged to do so, of, of course. I have one or two paintings that, that I am committed to finishing over the course of this year but and and so it would be it would be sometime next year but if if anyone was kind enough to get in touch then my email address um would you like me to yes give please that over yes the moment, um, would be the way to get in touch that's Stuart medland all lowercase at hotmail.co.uk okay and that's Stuart spelled with a u a R T, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Just before we go, George, may I ask you something? Uh, yes. To do with the eyes of the doggies, uh, one of the last things that I really um, got to grips with was was the wonderful colour of their eyes. Their eyes seem very dark to start with when, when mm. you when you look into their eyes on the, on the photograph and in real life. And I was I was taking pains to when we met up. In between the lockdowns to to look closely at the doggy's eyes the iris the color of the iris isn't very apparent but when when you do see it it's the most beautiful caramel um hot mm. toffee kind of color isn't it i'm wondering whether you think i did manage to recreate that when you next have a look at the painting when you go back and have a look at the painting <laughs> tell me what you think whether we managed to do that because i i was quite pleased with the way the eyes turned out in the end 
it will take a few weeks before I can come back to you about that because they're at the framers and they uh, are, aren't they? The, works, <laughs> with, with the I, pandemic, well, they're taking a few weeks to get uh, around to yes. work as well. So Indeed. I don't think I'll see it for at least a month, but I will definitely look out for that. Stuart, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on to the show today to talk to Scotty lovers around the world because we this podcast can be heard everywhere. Um, but you're based in the UK, of course. Um, yes, and if yes. people want to get in touch with you, we'll probably print the email address uh, in our uh, write up for the podcast podcast online but it's uh, Stuart Medland at hotmail.co.uk isn't it it is a great pleasure to talk to you as well George thank you very much thank you thanks for listening to London Scotty Radio this and all our podcasts are available online at londonscotty.club If you liked it, be sure to subscribe to us from your favourite podcast player app. Also visit us on YouTube for fun videos. And if you have a Scottish Terrier in London or nearby, be sure to join us.